Hi, my name is Anders, and today I want to talk about how games over the years become old. Because when you think of it, a rare game can be called timeless. Because as games evolve and get better and better, older games uh, become unplayable. What I mean by that, as game can exchange, older games can become archaic, even unplayable. Because you get used to to new stuff so quickly that when you load up an older game you can see uh, that it sh uh, how it shows its age. Are there such games that are well timeless? Are there games that don't become old? Well maybe Tetris because as time goes by, Tetris doesn't change, and Tetris can be played even nowadays. Maybe something like Pac-Man. Uh, but those are very simple games in their core. Like, there's like one or two game mechanics involved that are very simple to understand. But when we're talking about something more complex, like strategy games, RPG shooters, then we can understand that as generations move on, older games become obsolete. But, in my opinion, there is a genre of games, despite the obvious puzzle games, that, well, don't age. Well, they do, but not in the sense that we're used to. And I'm talking about adventure games. If we take the graphical aspect of adventure games aside, which is not the main attraction of those games to begin with, we start to understand that they don't actually age, per se, because... It's all about the puzzles and the story in those games, and those are things that can, once are done good, can stay good forever. Like a good story will be a good story even a hundred years from now, and a good puzzle will still be a good puzzle. One of such games, and in my humble opinion, is probably one of the best games that there is just out there in the world is Broken Sword, the first one, Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars, or Circle of Blood as it is known in the US. Now the reason why I think the, the, the first Broken Sword is one of the best games ever is because of its story and its characters. Um, and it has a certain charm to it. Now, if you don't know what Broken Sword is, there's a link in the description of this video that takes you to Giant Bomb's wiki page of this game. And if you don't like adventure games per se, uh, then there's a link to a YouTube video that was posted by Lonely Adventurer. He basically plays the whole game on his channel. So there are about 50 videos, 10 minutes each, but the story is worth it, so if you're not uh, so keen on playing those games, then I recommend just watching the videos then instead, because it's a great story. Now, obviously I'm a fan of that game, but the thing that proves me why that game is so great and can withstand the test of time is because it was released in 1996. I was five at that age. I didn't even know that you could play games on a personal computer. Heck, I didn't know what a personal computer was at that point. So, I got exposed to that game, I think, somewhere when I was 16, 17, more than 10 years than the game was actually released. And despite the old graphics, it took me from the start. A big part of it was due to the fact that it looked very good. Despite the roll resolution of the image, it was so nicely drawn and animated that it has the charm to it. That just takes you right away and sucks you in. The voice acting in this game is top notch, especially from the main character, George Stolbar, which is actually voiced by the same guy for all the four games in the series. So, but as I said before, the main focus of these games are the story and the puzzles. And the story is quite complex, but it becomes complex gradually, and that's the great thing about it, that it takes its time uh, uh, to set up the slow pace and as it gives you more and more information as you go along, making it more and more interesting. And the puzzles themselves are 
hard at times, but they're logical. You just have to think about it, sometimes in a bit different way. Not everything is so obvious from the start, but it makes sense when you understand it. It doesn't require from you some kind of twisted and bent logic like some other adventure games do. Of course, throughout your grand adventure you will meet a lot of different characters. And the great thing about them is that they're all fleshed out, even the minor ones. And even sometimes they express themselves not so much from voice or text as through emotions and movements. Which to me is a great testament how the artists of this game, with so little pixels that they had, could achieve so much. Like sometimes all you have to do is look at the George's face, which may be less than 10 by 10 pixels big, but still has a lot of emotions to it. Now you might think that since it's a game from 1996, there aren't really a lot of copies out there. You'll be wrong, because last year it actually got remastered and re-released for, I think, Wii, DS, PC, even the uh, iOS platforms. So, it's a director's cut version which adds additional stories and a little bit of gameplay to it, and I think some puzzles have been changed. I haven't played it yet, but from what I have seen, I've seen of it, it's a very nice version of that game, so I really recommend to play that game. And that, I think, is all I can say about this game without going into specific detail about the story. So, I really recommend you play it if you haven't. And again, if you don't want to play it, there's a link in the video to show you the game itself from start to finish. But if you have played it, then tell me what you think about this stellar and awesome game in the comment section below. And that will be it for today. Again, my name is Andres, and I hope you will have a nice day. Bye.